the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Dear friends, gratitude is one of the great qualities which we are called to express to God and to one another. In challenging times as we are experiencing now, it is not easy to do so. But we can bear in our mind that gratitude can help us, can lift us up. And today's gospel reminds us of that attitude that we can do. Let us continue to pray for each other, for the world in this challenging time. Now, let us call in our minds and hearts God's love, mercy, and providence for us. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo.
Father, on the commands of your sacred law, upon the of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of Paul to the Philippians. My brothers and sisters, it is my eager expectation and hope 
that I will not put to shame in any way, but that by my speaking with all boldness, Christ will be exalted now as always in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labour for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of, of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, they saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found other, others standing around. And he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they could receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. 
But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. With the common understanding of fair work, we know that our wages depend on the amount of hours we work. The more hours we do, the more we get paid. Such an understanding finds a problem in terms of the way the landowner treated the laborers in today's parable. It seemed to be unfair payment. How come those who work 12 hours get paid the same as those who work only one hour? It sounds unreasonable and unacceptable. And in the eyes of our society, it seems very unjust. However, it was not a case of unfair treatment according to our understanding of justice. The landowner did not pay the first workers unfairly. They did not get less than what they would, what was their due. The wages they received satisfied their agreement made at the beginning. Instead of receiving their wages with gratitude, they focused on the wages of others, making a comparison. Then jealousy, envy, or resentment emerged. Meanwhile, the later workers got exactly the same payment due simply to the landowner's generosity. So the treatment of the later workers reflects the kingdom of God. And the only thing about that kingdom which Jesus emphasizes is God's love, generosity, and justice. We should bear in mind that God's justice is beyond our common understanding. God's justice is also mercy and compassion. And so in the kingdom of God, those who have more or those who have less, and the early or the late are no longer an issue. We are all embraced by God's love and mercy. But the question is, do we need to wait for the afterlife to enjoy God's kingdom? I think we do not need to. We can live in God's kingdom here and now, in our relationship with God and with one another. In the time of challenges, which we are experiencing now, it is not easy at all. We all know that life is continuing with many unexpected happening and incidents. We can feel upset and disappointed from time to time. We can cry out that life treats us unfairly and probably we blame God we pay attention to others, seeing how lucky they are and do not acknowledge with an attitude of thanksgiving what we have been given from God. Comparison and enviousness can raise up in us any time. But today's gospel reminds us of God's generosity 
and the attitude that we should have. The way we see our lives, our relationship with God and with others, defines our attitude. We can treasure what we have been given with the right full heart, or we can only stick our eyes on the good fortune of others with jealousy and we fail to see God's generosity. Which way do we want to see life? It is worthwhile for us to reflect on that today. Now together we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator in heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Dear friends, Jesus opens our eyes to the boundless generosity of God. With glad and grateful hearts, let us pray for all our needs. We pray for Pope Francis and all spiritual leaders, that they will be sure guides for us to the wonderful mystery of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear, hear our prayer. We pray for a worldwide conversion of heart that human greed and selfishness be replaced by a joyful spirit of thankfulness. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for employers, that they ensure that all their employees work in safe conditions and are paid justly. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We renew our prayer for the frontline health and community workers, that they stay safe and strong as they devote themselves to the care of others. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those suffering the pain of loneliness and isolation, that family and friends will find ways of assuring them they are cherished. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the recently deceased and for those whose anniversary of death occurs around this time, that they will share in the glory of Christ forever. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Holy God, you have revealed the mystery of your mercy in the world made flesh. How us to be put his teaching into practice. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of God's holy church. Receive with favour, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Is it truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion, for the waywardness of that is yours. He humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and our angels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the founder of holiness. Make holy theirs for this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, 
and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church Stress throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by the by teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sound of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.